Hello all my friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to be doing a sewing vlog um, for the Ankara African Wax Print Series. And I am going to be using this pattern here that I have in my hand. It is the Easy Stitch and Save by McCall's. And the number is 2441. This is a vintage 1986 pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the instructions so you can see what we are dealing with here. As you can see here, we have all our pieces here and they include the front, the back, a loop, front facing, back facing, uh, uh, sleeves, continuous lap, a cuff um, for both uh, the right and left sleeves, and the sleeve head, and a tie belt. So it is a 10-piece pattern, and uh, it is classified as easy. Now look at these instructions here. It's just uh, one page of instructions. And there are five steps. This has got to be one of the easiest um, uh, layouts for instructions that I have seen in a very long time. So, um, like I said, just uh, five simple steps. And I'm hoping that these steps here are as easy as the instructions appear to be. So I have the instructions for it. The um, size for this particular pattern is uh, the 14 to 18, and I selected the size 16. Now this is supposed to be a slightly oversized dress, as you can see here. The sleeves are very loose. And the dress, which is kind of like a shift dress, is also really loose and you're supposed to cinch in the waist with a belt. So, um, here's the line drawing here. And that is the belt that I am supposed to create with this. As you can see for the unfinished measurements for a size 16, it's a 38, 30, and a 40. Um, I could go down to the 14 because I did measure the, um, the pattern pieces because they didn't have any finished measurements on the uh, tissue paper here. And I could go down to the size 14, but I don't want to chance it because I'm not doing a mock-up for this. Let me show you the fabric that I chose. So I chose this fabric here, which is an um, African print. Now, it is not an African wax print, but it is an African print. Um, it's polyester instead of cotton. And... Uh, as you can see, it is quite thin. Let me see if I can open it up here. I already washed it, so that's why you can see the fraying here. But it is quite thin. I really love this piece. It's a beautiful piece, and I am hoping to um, get some good wear out of this. Okay, so a little update before I go ahead and cut everything out. I did do some adjustments to the front and back of the dress. So let me go ahead and show you here. So as you can see, I did shorten the um, this breast area. So I brought the natural waistline up one inch. And then also down here, I had to bring this uh, line up about five and a half inches because this dress is really long. So the back of the envelope says that the total length of the dress from the back of the neck 
down to the uh, middle of the calves. It's supposed to be 45 inches long. Um, I adjusted this so that it's 40 inches because I did not want it to be that long. So hopefully everything will turn out right. Uh, those are the only adjustments that I made to this piece. I did not have to make any adjustments to the sleeves because the sleeves are meant to fit re really loose. So I don't have to do any adjustments there. It fits my biceps just perfectly. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut everything out and um, start the process of sewing. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut out all these pieces now. Okay, everyone, I am back at the cutting table and these are all of the pieces that I cut out. I cut out all 10 pieces and I am about to start with um, my uh, sewing directions, starting with number one, and that is uh, attaching the front facing to the front of the garment and the back facing to the back of the garment. Um, after that, it's just a matter of... Um, uh, uh, closing up the front and the uh, back pieces by uh, creating the seam on the left and the front and then attaching the sleeves and the cuffs to the sleeves. I think the cutting of the um, fabric is pretty much the most tedious for me, especially right now because I have back issues. I uh, hurt my back and it's just been really hard to get anything done. Okay, so let's get into finishing this project. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach the front facing to the front of the garment, the back facing to the back of the garment, and then stitch the front and the back pieces together. And I will tell you the rest of my progress after that. Okay, so before I attach the front and back facing to the front and back of the garment, I have to um, make these little uh, tucks at the shoulders of the front and the back on both the left and right sides. And that's like a little detail that they failed to mention. Um, in the beginning. I think this should have been step one, um, but they have it as a uh, step three. Now these are supposed to be tucks, but I haven't decided if I want to just go ahead and baste it and kind of leave it like more like a pleat. Um, we'll see because the style might not allow me to do that. Right now, I uh, need to go ahead and um, clip the center front here. So this is the interfacing for the front. So I did base the interface piece to the front piece. And now all I need to do is clip that center front going all the way down uh, to this point here. And then I need to uh, stitch with a regular stitch um, on both the left and the right sides, creating a seam there so that so that when I flip it over, um, the uh, center front of the garment will actually um, uh, have a, a closed in front. And I can go ahead and put the tie on and the button on to close that up. So that will be my closure for this garment. Um, I did do the tucks here, like the pattern um, instructions suggest, but I don't like the tuck. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these stitches and I'm just going to let this, um, uh, the pleats here just remain just like that as pleats instead of uh, top stitching on 
this uh, pleat here and creating a tuck. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, I did serge the um, interface pieces. So this is the front and this is the back. So I did serge those pieces mainly because this fabric, um, it does fraise a little bit, not a lot, but I can tell over time it may not hold up. So that's why I just went ahead and serge the interface pieces. And I'm also going to serge the um, side seams of the garment as well. So that's wow, why. guys, we really must be in the 80s. Look, this pattern calls for sleeve heads. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Sorry, this is just a side note. I have never sewn sleeve heads in a garment before. I've always sewn vintage patterns, but I never seen a pattern that actually called for sleeve heads. Uh, most of the vintage patterns I've sewn are from the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. I've never really sewn anything from the 70s and 80s, so I'm just like really shocked. Wow. So let me show you where I am at. I am um, on this step right here. And um, I am about to uh, finish with um, sewing the cuff to the gathered sleeve. So I went ahead and I searched the inside of the sleeves because this fabric is, um, it does fray. And I did the same thing to the dress as well. I searched the side seams and I attached the cuff here to the gathered sleeve. So now all I have to do is flip that over and um, stitch in the ditch here. I'm going to remove those gathering stitches too, but I'm going to stitch in the ditch here so that um, it catches the back of this and then that will be uh, sewed down. Before I sew all that together, I need to sew this side here, but um, I need to attach my ties to this. So let me explain that real quickly. This pattern calls for you to use um, a button as a closure on the end of the cuff here. And so um, you would also have to do a little buttonhole here. Instead, I decided to make four ties. So I'm going to use two for each um, sleeve. And I'm going to go ahead and put those ties right in between this here on this cuff and I'm going to go ahead and sew it down and catch it and it's going to have um, I will have a tie on each um, end of the cuff and I'm going to tie my sleeve together at the bottom instead of using the button closure method and the reason why I want to do that is because um, my arms tend to uh, go up and down uh, between sizes throughout uh, the year. So that's why I decided to do the ties instead. The other change that I did to this garment is um, to the front here. So at the front, if you remember, it has this fun little yoke detail. So let me get the instructions so you can see more clearly. So at the front, it has this um, opening here. It has a slit here. And uh, this is how you get in and out of the garment. So this opens up. There's a button that goes on this here for the closure. And uh, it opens up. And then you can pull it over your head. And the bust area and the waist area is uh, loose enough that uh, you don't have to like have a zipper or anything in the back. So um, it doesn't have any other closures. So instead of leaving this uh, like this closed up, I decided 
to go ahead and uh, leave that open. So let me show you my garment so far and what I intend to do with it. So these are the buttons that I'm going to use and I'm going to show you what my idea is in a moment. So if you see right here, this is the the top here where it's um, supposed to be like the closure as I talked about and it has like this little tab, tab here and I'm supposed to put a button here and then that button will um, go in between this little tab closure but I'm kind of flirting with the idea of leaving this open like this just like that and then if I leave it open like that, I was going to uh, attach these really cool buttons to the garment. So like put one right here maybe, and then one right here um, on each side. So I thought that that was really cute. Obviously, it's not uh, 1980 style, but I think it's really cute. Um, I do have this uh, purchase belt to cinch in the waist right here, just to get an idea of how it looks. But I am going to make a belt to go with it out of the same fabric. So I'm just going to go ahead and end this uh, here. And the next scene that you will see will be the finished uh, garment. And Hello everyone. So this is possibly my last update. I know you're supposed to be looking at the final garment right now instead of a washing machine, but let me explain what happened. So um, unfortunately, I decided that I was going to try to get some of the stains out of the garment after I completed it. Um, you know, the regular stains that you make when you are using your fabric pens and I used a stain remover and this was like probably the most idiotic thing that I could have done. Um, the stain remover lift the um, dye from the red part of the garment onto the white areas of the garment and now I have color runs on the entire garment. And it just, it, it's a disaster. So I went on YouTube and I looked at a couple of videos on how to remove uh, stain runs or color runs um, out of your garments. And one of the suggestions was to use baking soda and vinegar and soak that overnight. So I think it was like a half a cup of vinegar to... Uh, two or three gallons of water and then um, a couple of tablespoons or so of baking soda. So because baking soda and vinegar is really safe, I decided to use a little, you know, more in quantity of it. I did that for eight hours and it lifted some of the pink out of the um, white areas, but not enough that I'm happy. And so I did some more research and um, I found a video that said if the soaking method does not work, that you can then um, afterwards put it into your washing machine on delicates. And so that's what I did. It's on a delicate cycle on cold because if you use warm or hot, that will continue to um, lift that uh, red dye so it's on cold and I have it on a light spin because this is a wax or not a wax print this is an African print print so it is a little bit more delicate and I put it on a, a normal soil level for um, the machine so hopefully this will work i don't know if it'll work or not but so the solution that i have in here right now i did put some baking soda some more baking soda on the garment and also some vinegar and a little bit of detergent so hopefully this will help um i don't know if you can see or not but it still looks a little bit pinkish um on the plus side I think it is evenly distributed, so it'll kind of look like it's supposed to be pink. Um, but I am a little bit nervous about it. Um, yeah, so for those of you who are watching, please learn from my mistakes. 
So if this doesn't work, I'm going to go ahead and use the Color Safe Bleach because at this point, the project is pretty much ruined anyway. And so I don't see how I can possibly ruin it or damage it any further because I'm just not happy with it. So anyway, hopefully that'll work. If it doesn't work, then I'm just going to have to chalk this up to a learning experience. Okay, so this is what it looks like seconds coming out of the wash. As you can see, it still has like a pink tint to it. So soaking it overnight and washing it afterwards with baking soda and vinegar did not work. Um, I might go ahead and try the color safe um, treatment. But to be honest with you, it does look better than what it was. Um, it definitely looks better than what it was. Um, I don't have any before pictures, but... Um, some of the red did come out of the white areas. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and use Color Safe Bleach and see how that works. Okay, everyone, I went to the store and I purchased this Purex Stain Fighter and Bright Booster. It is a Color Safe Bleach. I have used Purex products in the past, but I've never used their Color Safe Bleach. So this is the first time that I've ever using this. Um, the instructions on the back says to pre-treat your stains before using them. It also says to add with your regular detergent to get um, the best results. So I am going to use this uh, Borax, all natural Borax cleaner. It is a detergent booster as well and it is supposed to help to remove stains as well. So I'm going to use those two together and hopefully with the combination of those two, I can get rid of this color run. Please wish me luck. All right, guys, here we go. This is after the whole washing and everything and trying to get all the stains out. Um, you can still see um, the tint of pink here. It's not bad, and because it is pretty much even over the entire dress, it kind of looks like that's how it's supposed to be. Um, and the bright red actually detracts your attention away from the, um, the tint of pink on camera. And I think it's because of the lighting. It doesn't look as pink, especially when I get up close. It actually looks somewhat white. Um, but it's not like that at all. And let me put the belt on and you can probably see more clearly the distinction between um, the original garment and now after it has been stained. So here it is with the belt. If I get up close, you can kind of see like this is the belt. This belt did not get any stain remover on it and so that's why it's really nice and bright and white. Whereas um, this garment did. So you can see, you know, the jump from, you know, the tint pink here to the white. So I won't be wearing the belt with it. Um, yeah, but it is pretty evenly distributed. I don't know, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you think that I can wear this, that I can pull it off? Even though it um, is a little bit pinkish. Um, I didn't bother with putting the buttons on after I destroyed it. I felt 
kind of depressed and I kind of stopped at that point. And um, honestly, I was trying to save the garment. All right. Thank you guys for tuning into the channel. And until next time, stay creative.